Hey, how's it going? My name is Vashalos, in case you didn't already know, and today I want to talk to you about a build I've begun working on. It's a work in progress, so don't have any expectations. Seriously, I haven't even completed the campaign. I'm not recommending this to blast your 17s. I'm not recommending this to do Ubers. I'm doing this because I want to see what it's like, see if it's any fun, maybe find out if it's good at anything in the game, or if it's strong. I don't know. I have no idea. No expectations. So, what's the skill? What build are we talking about? I'm talking about Animated Guardian of Smiting. And I'm going to go with a Necromancer because I think it's going to be easier to give him the resistances that he will need through Commander of Darkness, primarily. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to go and pick up even more things like Indomitable Army, which I am right next to. We may do that if he feels a little too squishy or if he dies. But I, I really don't want to do that if I don't have to. Um, I, w I would like to make Bob irredeemably offensive and see him delete things. Because I was watching Empyrean and his group's Billion Damage Bob project, and it just looks so much fun. I don't have that many people to play with, though. So if you don't have any friends to play with just like me, <laughs> then this is the build for you. But... I'm not here to hold your hand through the whole process yet. This is an introductory guide. I'm just here to talk to you about some of the taglines on Bob, some of Bob's behavior, some of what you can do early on to give Bob an extra oomph, some of the unique items I would recommend while leveling and going through the campaign, and then some of my ideas once you're done with the campaign, going through maps, and considering alternate versions of what you could do with Bob. So, yeah. Let me go ahead and dive on into some of that. Before we go any further, I need to make sure everybody has a perfect understanding of Animated Guardian in this one specific way. The other ways, yeah, you can kind of get away with skirting by. But this one, I really don't want you to make the same mistake that I just did because it was expensive. I'd lost two Divine Orbs uh, without even realizing. So... What were the sequence of events that caused that? One, I gave my Bob a pair of Rallakesh's Impatience. It's around two Divine Orbs. 1.8 to 1.9 is like the more common price, but I gave them two Divine Orbs. And if we read here, um, the equipment of all Animate Guardian skills is tied to the summoner, not a specific gem or skill type. So... Skill type is referring to transfiguration. So if we have an animate guardian and then an animate guardian of smiting on the same character, that's the same animate guardian. One can be lower level and one can be higher level, but they will both use the same gear. But you may say, well, I summoned a level one animate guardian. He doesn't have any gear on him. That's because he's too low level. He can only use gear that the skill description says he can. If I go to mine right now, it says it can use up to level 58. So if I had a different Animate Guardian skill gem that was higher level, capable of equipping higher level gear, and then I were to use this one, that gear wouldn't show up. Because he can't yet. Doesn't mean it's not there, just can't put it on. Um, you may have experienced something similar where it's like you lose some stats on your character, and then you still have the gear piece equipped, it's on you, but you're not using it. I hope that makes sense. And, um, yeah, what happened was I was using Animate Guardian of Smite. Then I was like, well, I want to see what Animate Guardian feels like with this like similar gear. So I went and bought an entirely new set of gear <laughs> and then replaced all of my old gear, I guess, on top of my Rallakesh's Impatience with what you see right now, which is Wake of Destruction. Um, those Rallakesh's Impatience lasted all of but only a few hours in my possession. Bye-bye. Um, they're gone now. So now that you are aware of my mistake, hopefully you will not make the same. And we can move on towards another description of this build. <laughs> all right. Animate Guardian of Smiting. Here is your crash course on the skill. First up, he uses a transfigured skill. Even though he's already a transfigured skill, all right? He's, he's basically born to be Pimp My Ride, except in Path of Exile. Yo, dog, I heard you like using transfigured skills. So I'm going to use a transfigured skill so I can use a transfigured skill while you use a transfigured skill. Moving on, Smite of Divine Judgment is different from Smite in a couple of ways. 
Regular Smite gives you an aura. That's gone with Smite of Divine Judgment. But Smite of Divine Judgment strikes additional targets, and then the area of the lightning damage it calls down deals more damage instead of less. If you can see here, less area damage, and then we go back over to Smite of Divine Judgment, more area damage. So that's a heck of a difference. On top of the effectiveness of added damage, at the top end is 369%. We go back over to the regular one. The top end is 488%. Do with that information what you will. I'm not too crazy of a number cruncher. It's not really what I do. Um, but I'm sure that there is a difference to be interpreted there. Food for thought. Moving on, though. Animated Guardian of Smiting is now a lightning skill gem as well. You can see here at the top, spell, minion, lightning. And that just makes it so that early on, you can give him plus to gem levels through some really convenient ways, such as getting yourself a sub-item level wand or shield. The shield has to make sure it has some sort of energy shield on it, if I'm not mistaken, or it has to be a, um, a caster shield, I guess is a simpler way to say that. But then you just spam some alteration orbs until you get plus to gem levels, and then voila, all of a sudden you have plus to two, and then if you're lucky, you get plus to one all on your helmet while leveling as well. So going back to the gem, though, is that he doesn't have a weapon restriction. He can use whatever weapon he wants. He can use face breakers. He can use a two-hander. He can use a sword and shield. Dual-wield daggers, dual-wield claws. It doesn't matter with him because it's literally baked in. He is above the weapon laws. And that's all there really is to say about the differences of Animated Guardian of Smiting and regular Animated Guardian. If you really care... Um, the regular Animated Guardian has 38% more maximum life. The configured, <laughs> configured, transfigured version doesn't have that tag. So missing quite a handsome amount of life, but so far I haven't really run into any issues because of that. For this section, I am going to go over the gear for our boy Bob, at least early on. I'm not going to say it's the best gear that you're ever going to give Bob, and the whole of the universe. But I will make you recommendations so that you can start using Bob as soon as you can, which is level 28. And some of the gear will be for Bob, and then probably near the tail end I'll go over my, my brief early game recommendations so that you can get that gear onto Bob as soon as possible as well. Because he has his own level requirement. Without any further digression, I will recommend Face Breakers. They require level 16 so Bob can automatically use them. They also come with a massive modifier towards physical damage with unarmed melee attacks. Since Bob does not have a weapon requirement, he is able to use these. He could use them if he were a regular Animated Guardian, but we're going to be using Animated Guardian of Smiting, so this is just like an added pro bono kind of thing. Comes with Critical Strike Multiplier, a well-known stat for minions that is rather powerful. The next gear is the chest piece, Gruthkull's Pelt. I saw this in an Empyrean video, so I don't want to take credit for this being like an intelligent choice that I decided to make. I merely watched a video and am deciding to follow in their footsteps. The reasons why is because of the global physical damage, comes with a massive amount of life, and then really the regenerate 10% of life per second is incredibly valuable to minions. It's one of their only defensive layers available in the whole game. So... The fact that we get so much from this one chess piece is, is really, really lovely. It's like, it's not an expensive chest piece, but it's not cheap either. I bought mine for like 50 to 60 chaos. Wake of Destruction. Um, if you're going to be using face breakers, you need flat damage from somewhere. Whether that is from a support gem, whether that is from another item that he has equipped, one of the easiest ways I found early on is giving him a pair of Wake of Destructions. Gives you 1 to 120 lightning damage to attacks, and that's really all there is to write home about it. I don't think that the Shocked Ground is worth mentioning, mainly because the uptime is dubious. I have no idea if he's even applying it, if he's like on the same target for a little while. So, yeah, me merely flavor, if, if you ask me. Thrill Steel is the helmet that I would recommend early, um, at least until you're able to pick up, oh, what's it called? 
Ravenous Horde? Because then you have an additional source of Onslaught, right? You don't really care about him always having Onslaught. Or maybe you do. I don't really know. Currently, the helmet that I'm using is Fairgrave's Tricorn. Because I thought it would have been really interesting if he were able to become possessed. I thought that would have been really, really funny and fun. But so far, if you want my opinion on that, I don't think he can become possessed or touched or whatever the, the right word is. So, a little bit of a bummer. But it does come with an upside that it gives him some resistances, he can't be shocked, and then it gives him some flat damage as well through the cold damage to attacks at the top there. But early on I was using Thrill Steel because of the onslaught and how fast it made him, which is nice. Minions really love attack speed, and onslaught is a lot of it. That really does it for the gear. Oh, I didn't talk about the shield. Hold on, let me look it up, I guess. Calton Halt, PoE Wiki. So, if you want damage, you probably want to go with the Calton Halt because it gives you 10% of 5, 10 to 15% of physical damage as extra cold. There's probably a better option. Again, I I am really just going over like low level options here. This is your introduction to the skill if you want to try and play it or experiment alongside me. So, besides Calton Halt, I would say Lycosidae is also a lovely option early, and that is what I'm currently using. Because your hits cannot be evaded, is rather useful when you're already kind of stretched thin for resources, whether it be because you don't have the ability to fit in precision to give him additional accuracy, maybe you don't have enough radius for your auras and he's constantly dipping in and out of that additional accuracy being provided, maybe you just don't have the passive points to scare and you can't path down towards giving them additional mastery or, or something like that. I don't know. There's all sorts of problems that minion builds go up against, and I like solving things as cheaply as I, I possibly can because that means more people can get their hands on their mouse and keyboard to give this build a try. Now then, let's go over some of the unique items that I think are just fun to think about for the build, whether it be giving them to Bob or equipping them ourselves. Now let's go over some of the unique items I have planned for my actual Necromancer instead of just Bob. It's only two unique items. It'll be really short and sweet. Chains of Command, it makes it so that whatever Bob kills, he will then summon a copy of his weapon. Since we're using face bakers right now, I don't know how that's actually going to work out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But if it doesn't, I have a bunch of different items that I would like to try out as well. I'll go over them shortly, but we're still talking about the Necromancer. That's all there is to the chest piece. He summons copies of his weapon, and then we have additional weapons. But it also means we can't use different minion types. We can't use like specters and, and other stuff. So there's there's a little bit of a downside there. Triad Grip, as I mentioned before, um, Smite of Divine Judgment is the skill that our animated guardian is using, and that converts 50% of his damage over to lightning damage. So we could use these gloves as a really easy way to convert that other 50% to lightning damage as well. As well as um, it saves us from having to use physical damage to lightning support. I don't know if that's a good support for this build. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, personally, I would like to not use it because I feel like there's probably stronger options available to us. It's just that conversion is kind of difficult for minions. There's only really so many ways to get it done. And that's the two unique items I wanted to talk to you about in reference for my Necromancer. I'm going to go through a bunch of other unique items now that you could give to Bob. And... First up is Brain Rattler. Main reason why I started looking at this was the 50% damage conversion, as well as hits with this weapon shock enemies as though dealing 300% more damage, so it's got like a support gem kind of baked into it, as well as 20% lightning penetration. It's got a lot going for it in terms of a weapon. It's a two-hander, it's a little slow, but so is unarmed. Uh, unarmed attack speed is 1.2 seconds baseline, and then Brain Rattler is 1.25, so honestly it's, it's a little faster than what I'm currently doing. Therefore, it's on the table um, at some point, I think. Ralakesh's Impatience, as I said before, I used a pair of these boots and instantly deleted them by accident. I think they have value in the build. I just don't know if it's actually better than giving Wake of Destruction a go because Wake of Destruction is way cheaper, gives you flat damage, which is something that if you're using Facebreaker, you're already severely lacking. So, you know, Wake of Destruction is a godsend in that regard. 
But relic caches and patience, I mean, if you're planning on using chains of command and you can't have specters all of a sudden, well, you know, that's an easy way to get your animated guardian frenzy charges and endurance charges and power charges. So I, I think there is value to consider there. I just don't know if it's like worth two divine orbs kind of investment. Bino's Kitchen Knife, um, since we're a Necromancer, there's an opportunity to instead convert that physical damage over to Chaos and see how it would do as a poison build. So what if we gave him a Bino's Kitchen Knife while wearing Chains of Command? I don't know how that would work. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. I've heard Bino's Kitchen builds can kind of pop off sometimes, but I don't know what they fully require in order to be good. I just know it's an option. Onigoroshi. I have played this as Animate Weapon of Self-Reflection, and it did really, really well, through the campaign at least. Um, after a while, it just didn't have as much as I would have liked going for it, and I kind of moved on. But maybe with Chains of Command, Onigoroshi would finally have the numbers to really pump that damage number up. Really thematic sword. If you've never played with it before, highly recommend it. Very, 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 very fun playthrough when you're using Animate Weapon of Self-Reflection. But that's not the build we're talking about. You would be giving this to Bob, and then you would, you know, perforate Onigoroshi by using Chains of Command. The Dancing Dervish. I was reading a post from eight years ago that said this didn't work. That was eight years ago. I think it is time that we try again to see if that he can summon Dancing Dervish, because I think that would just be hilarious. Um, the reason why this isn't possible, according to that thread that I was reading through, is that Minions with Rampage was literally harming the game in terms of lag. So I won't be surprised if this isn't possible, but after reading that thread, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try this. It's going to be so fun. If it works. If it works, it would be so much fun. But I'm... I'm almost confident that it isn't going to work. But I can dream. I can dream, darn it. Doriani's Fist, if you don't want to use Face Breakers, this would be the other unarmed option you have available. Gives you a whole heck of a lot of lightning damage and then a chance to shock. He probably won't be able to use Doriani's Touch skill because, just like triggers, minions usually can't participate in that kind of shenanigan. Paradoxica, it's a really good sword. Um, Built-in double damage. It's really the only reason why I'm thinking about it. Maybe Replica Paradoxica would also be interesting. I don't know. Void Forge. This is what Empyrean and his group were giving their billion damage Bob. So there's probably a lot of thought to be given to this if you have the right amount of support. And then Echo Forge. This is something that I've tried in the past, but I wasn't really able to get it to be the way that I wanted. But it's along the same lines of Bino's Kitchen Knife, where if you give Bob an Echo Forge and then put on a Chains of Command and let Bob go to work, all of a sudden you have a lot of Echo Forges following you around. And the main reason why I wanted to do that is that Echo Forge just looks so cool, and um, having a bunch of Echo Forges just follow you around felt really thematic. Oh yeah, and I need to talk to you about the best helmet for Bob. Hands down, this is the this is the best helmet that you can give to Bob. It is Abyssus. Enzymite Bergenet. Gives flat damage, and it gives critical strike multiplier. Comes with the downside, he takes increased physical damage, but that's easily solvable, especially because Bob is probably going to have a massive life pool. Really quick, I almost forgot this one. Inextricable Fate. These boots are really, really interesting if you give them to Bob. All damage inflicts poison against enemies affected by at least three grasping vines. And then, if we anoint Vine Spike Cordial, it will inflict a grasping vine on hit against enemies with fewer than eight grasping vines. That's pretty cool. I'm sure we could think of something that could apply grasping vines to everything around us. And then all of a sudden, we don't care about converting damage at all. Because all of his damage poisons. I think that's really, really cool. Um, I may be exploring that at some point. But yeah, I can't believe I almost forgot that. that Let's was, go that over some mandatory support gems for Bob. First, minion speed support, multi-strike support, and predator support. Multi-strike because he's in attack skill. Minion speed because attack speed is super important. So is that movement speed. As well as predator support makes it so we can tell Bob what to do. 
Bob is really stupid. I cannot stress that enough. You need multiple ways to help Bob address his stupidity. Predator support is the number one way. And then the other way that you'll help him readjust his focus is convocation. Convocation, just so you can see it, you press the button and he teleports to you. Oh, he's stuck on a wall. Boom, he's right there. You don't always have to press it. Sometimes he'll just naturally teleport if he gets far enough away. But I really would not play this without convocation because of just how stupid Bob is. I mean, I can't stress it to you enough. Seriously. He will have a monster that is punching him in the face, but his focus will be on the monster behind the one punching him in the face, and he will just stand there and take it. Unless that monster dies, his focus really doesn't change all that much, or if you get out of range. So just use those two things I recommended. Convocation and Signal Prey, you'll, you'll be infinitely happier. The other support gems that I would like you to consider have, have some stipulations about them. One, you need some sort of added flat damage somewhere, probably. I'm going with added lightning damage right now because the Awakened version will also give plus one to levels. If you're doing like a Chaos version, probably add Chaos damage instead. If you don't have your damage fully converted, then probably use physical to lightning support until you can get something like Crim Sorrow if you're not using face breakers on Bob, or you can use triad grips on your character. You can also, I think, there's the, the Brain Rattler. There, there's a couple of ways, I guess, is what I'm getting at. But ultimately, you should have your damage converted fully in some way. Because that will allow you to use elemental damage with attacks at full efficiency. If you have 50% physical and 50% lightning, I wouldn't recommend using elemental damage with attacks. You're going to probably want something else. That's all I'll say about that. I could really go on and on about specific situations and how you could address it, but let's talk about link skills now. Late game, you're probably going to care about destructive link because of the critical strike multiplier and how powerful that is. As well as destructive link makes it so that your main hand critical strike chance is now your minions critical strike chance. 8% critical strike chance is significantly larger than I think what minions base critical strike chance. I, I think it's like 2% or something like that. I really don't know. Or if they even have one without the link. So the next link I would recommend is flame link because that makes it so they gain a flat amount of fire damage and then a percentage of fire damage from your maximum life. It's like 5% right now. Or is that just like the actual function of the skill? Anyways, you see right there, linked target gains added fire damage equal to 5% of your maximum life on top of the flat damage. Sorry to have said that in such a wishy-washy way, but that's why I'm using this one currently. I don't really have a lot of damage on him otherwise, so the added flat is extremely nice while leveling. I'm sure that will change, and once we have more flat on him, destructive link will take over. If you're looking to improve quality of life even further, you could attach intuitive link to... Desecrate and an offering skill. And then whenever the link is active, Bob will attack something and then those spells will cast and he will self-automate his offering skill. It, it should work that way. I think it will work that way. Haven't tested it yet. I don't have the dexterity necessary to try it, but that is something on my list of things to do and, and see if it works. And now I think the only thing left, now that you've gotten all of the asterisks asterisks and explanations is show you what it looks like in this aqueduct. I don't have any super crazy gear on. I have plus one on the wand, plus one on the shield, plus one on the helmet, tabula rasa, seven league step, the rings aren't anything crazy. This is all just so that I could get it together, see what it feels like, and look through some unique items on what could be fun. Some other things that you could add to Bob's repertoire would be auras and then war cries. For auras, no explanation is needed. They're really simple and straightforward. For war cries, just make sure you're reading the description on if it actually applies to a strike skill. Some of them are for slams and others are for, for strike skills, so just be sure of it. And I think that's it. I think that's all I could really yap about when it comes to Animate Guardian in general. I hope you found this fun. I hope you found it interesting or useful. I hope you'll share it with somebody. I hope you'll 
Remember to leave me a like, comment, or subscribe. Those all go a really long way, especially the subscribers, because I'm still looking forward to 500 subscribers. I've been at this for about a year, if not a little bit more, and I'm still a really small fish in a, in a gargantuan pond. So anything you guys can do to help me out in that regard, you have no idea how much I appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Peace.